Dr. Hoven taught science for 15 years. Then he got his PhD in education. He's always had a love for teaching. But one thing that he's discovered is that in many of the science textbooks across America today, there are some fallacies, some false information being presented. Why is this information in the science textbooks? What are they trying to prove? Hi, my name is Eric, and in this seminar called Lies in the Textbooks, you're going to find out some of those lies that are being presented and what you can do about it. Welcome to our seminar tape number four on lies in the textbooks. I taught high school science for 15 years and now I travel and do seminars on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. And I'm concerned that what kids are being taught in our classroom is simply not true. There are some lies in our textbooks. In our first few seminar tapes, we talk about a variety of lies in the books. Now, I like science. I'm not against science. I collect science textbooks. I have actually hundreds of them and I really, really like science. But I'm concerned there are some things in these books that just simply are not true. Somebody wants your kids to believe a particular theory, <clears throat> which is understandable. Everybody tries to convert others to, to, to their belief system. I'm going to try to convert you to my belief system. That's perfectly fine to, for everybody to try, to try to do that. However, you don't want to use lies to accomplish that. So I'm going to tell you about some of the lies in the textbooks. In my first three videos, on number one, we talk about how students are being lied to about the Big Bang. It's a big dud. It didn't happen. They're being lied to about the age of the earth. The earth is not billions of years old. They're being lied to about the caveman. There's never been a caveman, unless you mean Osama bin Laden. Okay? <laughs> They're being lied to about the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs did not live millions of years ago. Dinosaurs lived with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And on this tape, we're going to talk about at least 25 or 26, maybe even 30 if we get time, more lies that students have to face in their textbooks. And then on tape number five, we're going to tell you what you can do about it and some of the dangers of this philosophy. More lies in the textbooks. Let me set the record straight right up front. I am not trying to get evolution out of the schools. I'm not trying to get creation into the schools. I just want the lies out of the textbooks. I think we'll find if we take the lies out of the books, there's nothing left to support the evolution theory. Okay, well that's their problem. If all you have to support your theory are things that have been proven wrong years ago, I think it's about time you get a new theory. Is there anybody here who thinks teachers or textbooks should be allowed to deliberately lie to students for any reason? Okay. Wisconsin has a law that requires textbooks to be accurate. So does Alabama. Textbooks shall be adequate and current. Texas says instructional material shall be factual. Florida has a law that says instructional material shall be accurate. California says textbooks shall be factually accurate. Minnesota <laughs> says a teacher shall not deliberately suppress or distort subject matter. Yeah, sure, hey there, fella, you betcha. <laughs> the problem is absolutely none of those states, including your state, enforce the law as it's written on the book. The books are simply not accurate. Here's a public school textbook from 1908. They told the kids in 1908, God created the heavens and the earth in six days. And all that was made was very good. Prayer is a duty, but it's vain to pray without a sincere desire of heart. Hmm. God governs the world in infinite wisdom. Public school textbook. Here's a public school textbook from the year 2000. Evolution is a fact, not theory. Birds arose from non-birds and humans from non-humans. No person who pretends to any understanding of the natural world can deny these facts. I think things have changed a little bit, folks. By the way, when he says evolution is a fact, this is called a mantra. They think if you say it long enough and loud enough, everybody will start believing it. It's not a fact. Evolution's a religion. This textbook says, boys and girls, even though most scientists and religious leaders no longer see evolution and religion as in conflict, a minority of Christian fundamentalists remain opposed to evolutionary biology. This is called slanted journalism. A minority of fundamentalists, they're trying to marginalize those, even though it's the majority of the population of America that believes this, not the minority. Look what it says over here. Uh, it says, 
Creation science states that all species were created by God roughly 10,000 years ago and that they have not evolved since. By the way, let me stop right there. That is not what creation science teaches. Creation science teaches that all the kinds of animals were created roughly 10,000 years ago. And the only evolution has been variations within those kinds. So they're setting up a straw man here so they can knock it down and think they won the argument. Keep reading here. As scientific issues, we know these assertions are false. Over here they tell the kids, if we prevent our secondary school students from learning what science has to offer, let me stop right there. I'm not trying to prevent students from learning what science has to offer. I love science. I'm trying to prevent students from being lied to. But man, show us what, what does science have to offer? Things that we can observe and test and demonstrate. Evolution is not part of science. That's the problem. Watch this now. If we prevent our students from learning what science has to offer, we run the risk that they will not be able to compete effectively in college classrooms or in today's global economy. This is the evolutionist altar call. Right there. The world will be destroyed if we don't preach evolution. Oh, the sky is falling. We've got to get more evolution or we're all going to die. <laughs> they somehow think that their religion is important in our schools, and it's not. This textbook has over 100 pages where evolution theory is presented to the kids. Not one mention of creation. If they do mention creation, it's always in ridicule, like the one I showed you a minute ago. A minority of Christian fundamentalists. Folks, things have changed in our textbooks. Now, this chart shows how the atheists rate the United States based on how well they teach evolution. If your state is red, they think you're doing a lousy job of teaching evolution. Yay. Go, Wisconsin. All right. <laughs> the green states are doing a very good or excellent job of teaching evolution. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. Is there anybody that thinks teachers or textbooks should be allowed to use outdated or false information just to get students to believe a particular theory? No. No? Okay. Anybody here that thinks teachers that lie, deliberately lie, should be fired? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Now, anybody here that thinks textbooks with lies should be banned or the lies torn out? Yes. Sure. Okay, good. Just so we're all on the same page here. Now, it's always amazed me how two people can look at the same thing and come to opposite conclusions of what they are seeing. Two people can look at Grand Canyon. One of them believes in evolution. He looks at the canyon and says, wow. Look what the Colorado River did for millions and millions of years. The Bible believing Christian stands there, looks at the same canyon, and says, Wow, look what the flood did in about 30 minutes. <laughs> now, how was that canyon formed anyway? This textbook says, Over millions of years, the Colorado River has carved the Grand Canyon from solid rock. Now, just slow down a minute. Kids, it is a fact Grand Canyon exists. How many have been to Grand Canyon? I taught her science, studied Grand Canyon avidly. I like Grand Canyon. Beautiful place. Big hole in the ground. Now, there are two interpretations of how it got there. The evolutionists have an interpretation, and so do the creationists. The evolutionist is going to tell you that canyon formed slowly by a little bit of water and lots of time. Millions of years. The creationist is going to tell you, oh, the canyon formed quickly by lots of water and a little bit of time. The guys who believe in evolution are continually trying to erase the line between their interpretation and the fact column. And they want you to somehow think that what they interpret as evidence is now part of the fact. You got to really watch them on this. They're pretty slick. This textbook author does it just blatantly. He says, the Colorado River has cut through layer upon layer of rock over millions of years. Now just hold on a minute. I was in a debate one time and this atheist said, Hovind, you're so dumb. Don't you know it took millions of years to make Grand Canyon? I said, well, sir, I taught her science for years. I really enjoy studying Grand Canyon. I said, did you know if you built a dam across Grand Canyon, uh, that would take a lot of dirt, by the way, but if you did, a huge lake would fill in behind it. Did you know some of the water from Montana drains through the Grand Canyon? It's a huge drainage area. I said, sir, did you know that in between these two red lines is what we call the snow line. There's a ridge right there. The Grand Canyon enters at the far right over here. The elevation of the river at that, at that point is 2,800 feet above sea level. The river flows downhill for 270 miles and comes out the other side. And in between, while the river is flowing down, the ground is rising up and then slowly coming back down. It is so wide, 270 miles, that you don't notice it until you get way back and look at it from a satellite. But if you look at it in a cross section, this schematic shows the difference here. The river enters right here, 
and flows downhill and comes out the other side, it's actually going through a giant ridge, 270 miles long. At the 